Right then, this is your battery module for the A2 CFC. Now, it gets a little bit interesting. So, back in the day, and we're talking over 10 years ago now, when I did my course with Euro USC, and they were talking about LiPo batteries, they were saying you could take them down to 10% back then. And it's really funny, it was me and Andrew, both come from the model flying community, we were like, no, 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 no. Do not take lipos down to 10%. Keep, you know, get down to about 20, stop using them. We're getting to that. But yeah, um, what we used to be taught was wrong, I think. Um, and it, they did change what they were teaching. So, batteries, batteries in our drones. What type of batteries? Um, so we'll start with the old stuff first. So nickel metal. This is from an RC car, also can be used in RC planes. Nickel metal. Now, the CA says you, we have to teach you, the, the, the REs will have to teach you about uh, battery memory. So this, these actually have a bit of a memory. So if I leave this charged at a certain voltage and I don't use it for a year or for a long period, it remembers. So if you, if you charge it, if you leave it low and you just charge it, it always thinks it's low, so it never gets above. It always thinks the battery is charged at low. The battery report to the charger, no, I'm full, and it gets stuck with like a like a like a bit of a memory of what's going on with it. So battery memory doesn't exist in lipos, but it does in nickel metal. This is very old tech now. You'll find these still in RC cars, as you can see. It's from my RC truck, and this is probably buggered because it's probably got muscle memory. Uh, muscle memory <laughs> it's got battery memory so this thing is probably buggered to be honest which is a bit of a shame because the truck's quite nice when it works but then it's quite boring it's on the ground all the time unless you get a nice high jump and then it then it flies for a little bit of time next we've got our lithium ion so lithium ion packs these now these don't have muscle memory either so that's good um with these You'll find them in packs, use a specific charger, stick to the settings you've been told to charge at typically. These, the, the thing to watch with these if they go on fire, so if this does burst into flames, you're going to struggle to put it out. They're like a chemical fire, so foam and water, but water, it, it, it will still burn. So with these, you've really got to watch out. Fire blankets are good. Typically control the area around the fire um, and then you can hit these once these are finished reacting. But these are like, these are in Teslas by the way, so a lot of these are in Teslas. And when you get a car that goes up, then yeah, these are a problem because it just reacts one after the other. Now, lipos, lithium, lithium polymer. Now these were the holy grail for us modelers. They're light, they've got great capacity, they're brilliant, um, to a degree, anyway. So, we'll talk about the two types. First of all, we'll talk about the normal one. This is what one looks like normally, So, and it tells us about it. So, it will tell you it's a LiPo battery, 22.2 volts, it's got a 60C rating, and it's 6S and it's 4,500 milliamps. I'll get into all these bits in a bit. But basically, this is a nice 6S pack. Nice and beautiful. Look at that. There's no warping, there's no nothing, not expanded or anything. And you use a battery checker to check it out. So, before you fly, you plug this onto this. And then it'll tell you the capacity of the battery. You can check your cells, you can go through everything. So battery checker and these. Now, back in the day, because we used to do self-builds back 10 years ago, there wasn't DJI stuff and certainly wasn't smart batteries as such really around. These two went hand in hand. Always check before you fly, how many milliamps you're putting back in and all that kind of jazz, really. You had to be like the smart end of the battery. And that's how it used to be. Fiddle sticks to that. Now, this, it's a little battery and as you can see this is a lipo battery but look at that you see how that's bulged this battery can never fly again okay this battery needs disposing of i can either get a nail and a hammer 
don't recommend it because if you whack through this, it'd be a nice little bonfire, and the hammer will probably go that way somewhere. Um, <laughs> but that is yeah, that is kaputted. This is what a battery looks like you don't fly with. And that's LiPo again. And I wouldn't even charge that little LiPo now. Um, it's just been set a while. I think it's, I think I've drained it. I don't know. I've got the checker. Why don't I look and see what it's doing? Da -da -da -da. Oh yeah, look, zero volts. Yeah, so I've taken it down. It's 3S. Is that right? No, it's 2S. No, oh, it is 3S. 1, 2, 3. And I've taken it below 3 volts. So now it's just saying 0% capacity. It just needs the final bit drawing out of it. And that'll be dead forever. Now, DJI and others fly with smart batteries. The difference between this and this and being smart is this has a microchip in it. So you can see the current coming in, it will auto balance the cells and it knows when it was charged. And then with the DJI, you can select what the self discharging time is. So you can say, right, in five days, I want you to self discharge. And it will, after five days, drop down to storage voltage. So this won't do that. So if you just charge this and leave it in your box, after five days, this will still be fully charged. This won't. This don't leave any long charged any longer than around 30 days. I'd say 20 maximum, and then discharge it into storage. This, if this is bulging, if it's got damage, if it looks like it's got a problem, you do not fly with a damaged battery. Rule one. Number two is, what charger do you use to charge your batteries? Come on. You use the manufacturer's battery charger, don't you? Don't use non-standard chargers. So if you've got a Mavic 2 Pro, you'll use the Mavic 2 Pro charger. If you've got an Inspire 1, you'll use the Inspire 1 charger. The M300, use the M300 charger. Don't try and plug this into an M300 charger. Don't try and plug this into a Mavic 3 charger. That's, no. So manufacturer's charger for the battery you're charging every time. Okay. Now with the A2C of C as well, I'm going to show you in a minute about capacity, C ratings and everything else. But actually, is it really needed for the C, what, C, C rated aircraft? Because these aircraft have come from a manufacturer. They've been certified. So therefore the battery will have been certified and the charger and therefore you're not using ad hoc stuff like this. So the C ratings become kind of less important, especially if you just fly DGI stuff or Altel or Skydio, anything that's not a home build. All the, all the next stuff, you don't really need to watch it, but the REs will teach you it anyway. So you might want to watch it just as a refresher, okay? Um, and that's it really never fly with a, a damaged battery always check your battery before you take off and land and those are the important bits and you can quite clearly see on the dgi if you push the button it'll tell you its charge state and that's two bars and that's not good enough now this one last thing before i forget so if you did your gvc for example so let's we're going to intermingle a bit so the gvc course if you did the gvc course and you've got an operations manual a lot of people put in their operations manual that the battery must be 90% charged or 95% charged for a flight. Now that gets interesting because when you land at 80% because you've just done a quick shot, you just want to land, you just want to think about it and then take off again and fly and do a reset and everything, you can't with that battery. Because if in your ops manual you put, my batteries must always have greater than 90% charge for a flight, if you land and the batteries at 80%, you can't take off again with that battery. Because you've said you won't in your manual. Does that make sense? So if you've got your GVC and you've got an ops manual, go into your ops manual, change your battery 
what you fly with. You will only fly with enough charge or you will make sure the battery has enough capacity for the flight you're about to do. So if this was down to 40% and you wanted to do a 30 second flight, could you do it? Well, you could because you've now said, as long as the battery has got enough capacity for the flight I'm going to do, then what's the problem? You don't have to have a full tank. You don't have to have a full battery for, for like a 30 second quick flight, do you? That makes no sense. So that's one thing to watch out for if you do your GVC and what you put in your ops manual. Do not put battery must be more than X percent charged because it'll bite you in the butt. Oh, also, what I do, so my battery warnings for all my drones is 30%. Now, the reason why I have my battery warning set to 30% is if I'm 500 meters out or I'm mapping and the aircraft is 500 meters out, the reason why I let the battery warning go off at 30%, my first warning, is because when it comes back towards me and it's coming back, it gives me 10% to cover 500 meters in a headwind or anything else. If I'm landing at 20%, I'm happy. I don't mind being a bit over. If I'm under it, I don't mind by, say, 3 or 4%. I do not take my batteries down to, to like 10% or or any any lower 50, anything below 15% i'm not i'm generally not, i'm not happy doing that i just don't do it and the more you take from your batteries the harder you make them work doesn't mean they're going to last longer does it so i'm a bit easy on my batteries i don't stress them if you like right that's that let's get into how lithium batteries go in parallel serial the capacity, the C ratings, and everything else. So, battery capacity is based on two things. The first capacity is how many cells are in the battery. So is it a single cell, is it two cells, three cells, four cells, and so on. And then the capacity is also then based on the capacity of each cell. So if a cell is 2000 milliamps, then that cell and that battery will have 2000 milliamps and then it's how many of those you put together so if you put two together that's two cells so that's a 2s 1p so you've got two cells at 2000 milliamps that's your battery capacity and that's 7.4 volts now we can wire the batteries up in parallel connection. So if we take a 2S LiPo pack, 2000 milliamps, and we put it with another 2000 milliamp 2S pack, so it got to be both the same size, that will give us double the battery. So that gives us 4000 milliamps, but only at 2S. Now, we could wire them up in series, and if you wire them up in series, you end up with 2000 milliamps, but then you would also end up as a 4S battery because you're taking the 2S and the 2S together and you're making them together, but they must be same capacity again. So you can take a 2000 and a 2000, put them together, 2S packs become act as a 4S, and it, that's what in modeling we do. We sometimes will take two battery packs, 2000, 2000, 2S packs, we, want, we need a 4S pack, but we've got two 2S's behaving as one battery, basically. And that's for series connection. So the final section is the C rating. And this is critical for battery packs. So their C ratings are always clearly labelled on the battery. It is the maximum continuous discharge rating of the LiPo cells and it determines how many amps your system can pull from the battery without overheating it. So discharging batteries at higher C rates will raise their temperature and it can lead to combustion. Yes, a LiPo battery will burst on fire. To actually de determine how many amps a battery can supply, multiply the battery's pack's amps hour capacity, so 2000 milliamps, and then we take the C ratings, so 2000 milliamps divided by 1000 times 10C equals 
20 amps. Um, and this is important if you need to determine the discharge rate. Now, quite clearly with the A2CFC, you don't really need to know all this, but some REs are going to teach you it, which probably means watch out for the questions in the exams. Although it is actually quite now, I'm afraid, pointless with an A2CFC with C marked aircraft coming. So the last part on LiPo batteries is if they combust. So LiPo batteries, basically it is a chemical fire. Now what that means is that your typical fire extinguisher, a bucket of water, won't stop the battery from combusting until it's used up its own oxygen. It generates its own. It's a chemical fire. So best advice I can give you is number one if your lipo does catch fire you have to have the nerve to control the area around the actual lipo so control the fire around the lipo as best you can for 60 seconds to a minute and a half let the chemical reaction happen do not tackle the battery yet so you tackle everything around the battery and then after about 60 seconds to 90 seconds hit the battery with everything you can be water a fire extinguisher don't waste either one in the first 60 to 90 seconds you have to hold your nerve then you can actually tackle the fire and the battery itself after that time with lipos i always recommend that you charge on a fire blanket because in that case what you can do with a fire blanket grab the four corners and you can whip the batteries out of the house or out of wherever you're charging. You'll have seen throughout the video a pop-up coming up saying do not leave the batteries charging unattended. We used to say this all the time when teaching. It's really important. Just don't leave them on alone. Uh, don't leave batteries alone. You know, it's just not worth it. Yes, they are smart, but they can still go wrong. Have a fire alarm. That's right, a fire alarm have lipo safe bags these things there'll be links to these in the description where you can just go and you can look and then if you want to you can get them some people have start store batteries in old ammo tins i have a metal tin uh, box it's got no lid on it but it has the batteries in it so yes be really careful with lipos remember if they've been damaged don't fly with them if they're swelling don't fly with them and just always use the recommended manufacturer's charger. And if you're using hobby lipos, read them carefully and charge accordingly, please. Um, and and I'm, I've seen it where people go, oh, you can charge the battery at 2C or 4C. No, with hobby, always stick to 1C charging. And 1C basically means... If it's a 2000 milliamp battery you'll tell it to charge at 2000 milliamps there are people that will just tell it to charge at 4000 milliamps and that's when things can go really wrong really quickly anyway that's it on batteries batteries bit of a long one um so yeah uh, take care everyone safe flying and this is your a2 cfc battery information